So truly, we have been trying to get Bill to come on Houston Life for a while. We're in Studio B. The new studio is Studio A next door. You have such a routine. You've been on TV for such a long time here. People know and love you. How are you feeling about next week when you just stop coming in here? It's going to be weird giving up that routine and the daily contact with you guys. I mean, my colleagues here, my best friends. I truly have one or two friends outside of this building and that's it. So that's going to be a tough adjustment. Well, every day will be Saturday for you. Well, that's Not true. a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> or Sunday. Right, right. Or Monday. I mean... You know, the first time uh, I came here uh, to work at the station, it was January 2003. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, super intimidated to meet you, to work alongside you, and I, because I was in awe of, of your capability and the way that you... Who, me? You! <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you what, what literally seven days into the job here was when Columbia exploded. Uh -huh. And that's where I saw the magic happen. I mean, I was not only your colleague, um, but to watch you in action in that, in that incredible, horrific story in our backyard, in the first five seconds of seeing you watch that footage come into the newsroom it it was incredible that you weren't just reading words you were feeling it oh, and i you, think Courtney. that's that's why you've had such a great career you know how i heard about this this was a sunday morning yeah wasn't it? Saturday. saturday saturday morning. morning and so my my son was watching cartoons and i was in the kitchen and he comes into the room and he's only i don't know three or four and he said daddy mommy's crying i said why and he said because a spaceship blew up oh. and that's how I heard about it. And of course, I went, got a shower and came to work. Yeah, yeah. Incredible day. But and that's just a, a list of the stories that you've covered and the headlines that you've shared. And, you know, from Harvey and everything else mm -hmm. in, this, in this world that we have seen, you've delivered it. It's really incredible. You know, it, 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 I've covered a lot of stories, Courtney, and, and, and I've just loved this job so much. Um, the new news is about people and if you love people and what happens to people it's 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 a great profession i've loved it who was it eddie corral the former houston uh fire marshal said he he had a 50-year career mm -hmm. and he told me one day he said you know bill if you love what you do you never have to work a day in your life mm -hmm. and that and i said god eddie that's me right it's exactly the same so yeah yeah, Derek. It's great I advice. I see a question on a tip of your I have a million questions. You know, these time constraints of live TV always drive me crazy. 49-year career, born in San Antonio. Your first TV reporting job was in San Francisco, right. 1971. Fast forward to 1980 when you joined KPRC, and we were just rolling some old video of you at the desk uh -huh. with people like Linda Laurel, Paula Zahn, Jan Carson, of course, Dominique, since 2001. And I know that... Looking through the, the list of stories you've covered, it, it really is extensive and overwhelming. And people probably ask you this all the time. What's that story that really stands out to you? Is there something, a story or maybe a moment in your career, maybe one of these moments we're seeing on the screen right now, that really stands out for you? When I was, um, I guess I must have been about 11 years old, uh, Pope Pius the sixth died. 12th, 6th. Anyway... I was this kid, and I'm watching, uh, watching Douglas Edwards on CBS News reporting the, the death of this pope, and then the election of the next one, Pope John Paul XXIII. Mm -hmm. And I was a grown up a Catholic kid, altar boy and all that, and thinking, gosh, look at, you know, he's in St. Peter's Square, and the, then black smoke comes up, and then I, they're explaining how when the white smoke comes up, there's going to be a new pope. And I was watching all that and thinking how great it would be to have a job like Douglas Edwards where you're telling the whole world about something like that. So then fast forward, as you said, to um, uh, the election of Pope Francis, and there I was rep reporting that live that, that uh, night in Rome. It, it's, I, I think that's my favorite story, not so much because of the content, because of the... A full circle moment. Right, yes. right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And what's so great about you too, Bill, is I think that, you know, we always goof around, I think, in this business and say, well, you know, it's not rocket science. We can, you know, we're yeah. journalists. We always kind of poke fun at that. But there are certain people that really are born to do this job. And, and you're one of them because you've never put yourself in the story. And I think that's why people connect with you. 
uh, the viewers have connected with you and wanted to be part of, of your career is because you are always willing to tell that story. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes you so unique. Well, you know, Courtney, it's a calling. Uh, it, it, it really is. I mean, in the beginning of our career, you make no money. None. And, uh, and that goes on for a long time. And, and if you, you, you love to report, but it's, it's a hardship because your early years is terrible hours and sometimes seven days a week. And sometimes you cover stories that go on for, you know, all night, the hurricane coverage and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you love it, it's just the greatest thing in the world. And that feeling of accomplishment, thinking of Rome, I was there 11 days one time, I think it was the death of John Paul. And four o'clock in the evening, uh, here, you know, four o'clock news here, it's 11 p.m. in Rome, yeah. five o'clock midnight, six o'clock, 1 a.m. So you're live in these newscasts, you know, late at night, and then you get up early in the morning to cover the, the stories that are gonna be in these newscasts. So you're getting very little sleep. There's a lot of adrenaline flow that keeps you going. At the end of that time, 11 days in this case, if you've hit all those slots, made those horrendous deadlines, mm -hmm and you're on that plane coming back, you, that feeling of elation is, there's just nothing in the world like that. So I true. Mean, I I don't think there's another calling on earth that gives you the sense of accomplishment that this does when you make those deadlines. Right. Firing on all cylinders under great pressure in the field. Let's talk about your personal life a little bit. You have three children, mm -hmm. Heidi, Kate, and Travis. Two grandchildren. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. And Melissa, your wife of 27 years, you share a dog, Brinkley, who's mm -hmm. 12 years old. Uh, so cute. Got my Brinkley socks on today. Uh, uh, I love that. <laughs> I always love your posts with Brinkley. She's looking at you. She's with a your beautiful food. dog. I know, so she's I'm gorgeous. assuming in retirement then there will be more <laughs> sock wearing. Oh yeah, Brinkley. You know we're pals. We we do woodworking together, and we uh, we hang out together. And Missy's a, a, a volunteer for child advocate. That takes her away from the house a lot of the time, uh, taking care of these kids. She advocates for going to court hearings, making home visits, and all that. So I'll be home uh, doing some woodworking. I think we'll be talking about that a little later. And and that's truly one of your passions, right? Uh, I mean, did that just start as? How did that start, well, Bill? You know, journalism is a craft. Woodworking is a craft. You know, I'm just really transitioning from one craft to another. And, uh, you know, we have an editing process in journalism mm -hmm. and woodworking, you make mistakes all the time, you're having to fix. It's, 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 there's so much of an overlap there. Uh, I, I, I love being a craftsman and that's what I'll continue to be, but just a different craft. Right, right. Well, I love all your pieces. And I remember one of your first ones was Radar's doghouse, right? Yeah, yeah, I built, built him a doghouse when uh, when we had him in the old building. Oh gosh, yeah. every time I think of Radar, I miss him so much. I know, I, I know, know. he's such a sweet dog. Too. I didn't realize you built that dog house. That mm -hmm. is so cool. Well, I think we're gonna get a little taste today, Bill, of what you are, are able to do with your hands. Do you wanna show us? Should yeah, we walk should over we head over? Yeah, yeah, let's walk over. Okay. We will, uh, I don't know what you're gonna show us. Yeah. I hope we don't mess it up, Bill. This is, this is your home shop? This is your shop, right? Yes, uh-huh. And, and look at that. this uh, video, I'm making a box. And that's generally what I've uh, started doing now is making boxes because I made so much furniture, kitchen tables and entertainment centers and blanket chests and uh, cabinets and end tables and coffee tables and all this stuff that right. my wife said, please, no more furniture. <laughs> <laughs> we have I, no more space to put it. I, uh, I gave, a, I gave furniture, um, I made furniture for the habitat houses. That right, we, uh, right. That we do. And these are keepsake yeah. boxes, right? These are keepsake boxes. I've made hundreds of these, and I and and I and I give them all away. In fact, I like to give a couple away to your viewers. I Seriously? No. Yeah. Okay, but we're going to tell you about that in just yeah. a second. But we have to finish this one, right? Yeah. This one's not Th this not box done yet. has been um, been completely finished. It's been waxed. This one has not been waxed. I'm okay. I wonder if you guys would like to do it. We would love to. Yeah. We'll put these gloves. We need on. those gloves. Okay. And what so kind of wood is this, by the way, Bill? This is walnut. Beautiful. Um, Gorgeous. I like to make these out of one piece of wood so that the grain follows all the way around the box. How long does something uh, like that yeah. take, Bill? A box takes about eight hours. Wow. Because I mill, I mill the lumber, too. Look how incredible. It's so beautiful. When you close the lid, you can, you can see exactly what you just described. It's like one continuous mm -hmm. piece of wood. Yeah. So this, this box has had uh, two coats of uh, tongue oil, a mixture of tongue oil, 
a boiled linseed oil and polyurethane applied to it. And okay. what really brings out the, the grain and the shine is the wax. That Renaissance wax is what they use in the British Museum. Okay. Oh. So if you take, each of you take one of these little cloths. Okay. Uh, yeah, there yep. you go. One, and, one of these? Um, just like a t-shirt or yeah. something, right? Mm -hmm. And just and, dip it? Yep. Yeah. Well, dip I'm it afraid in there. I'm going to ruin your it just, piece. It takes a kind of a light coat. You y'all can work um, oh, on the top, smell. the sides, and this takes me back to like seventh grade wood shop, which was my favorite favorite class. Uh -huh. And just a light light coating on top. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. maybe I need more. Do I need more? Bill? Try to do it with with in the direction with of the, grain. the grain. Yeah. Okay. I'm already ruining it. No. <laughs> 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 Bill, I don't know. I'm not a crafter. I guess we'll be giving away one box, not two. <laughs> <laughs> this is, and you can already see it coming together, the little shine. But your this box is so beautifully made. I do say so myself. And is oh, waxing, is it something, mine. Bill, that if someone has a, a similar box, a solid wood box at home, is waxing something yes. that needs to be done frequently? Yes, it should be done because it keeps the fingerprints off the box and it puts a hard, a hard coat on it. So that if somebody, you know, puts a drink on it or... A drink on it? The thing about boxes, well, furniture, are, they're maybe? very uh, tactile. Am I pronounce right. them correct? Tactile yeah. objects. People like to pick them up and, and, and twirl them around in their ha hands and open and close and touch yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Around. So the well, our viewers are saying that they're, they're in awe. They're all loving it. The viewers <laughs> yeah, that are watching. Yeah, people are writing it, it on yeah. Facebook. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> you know, the wax just gives it that, that protective coat. And it, and it and it has the uh, added benefit of providing a bit of a shine too. It really does. Would you have to con do another polish on it later on or anything like that? You can wax it about every six months or okay. so whenever you think it needs it. And now what you need to do is buff it. Now that you've you, you've got a buff, buffing cloth over there, Derek. Okay. Just buff. You, you know, really have to put a little a little muscle a little into it. Grease. Muscle into it. Okay. And Bill, at what age did this woodworking Passion my uh, maternal grandfather, Frank, was a home builder. And when I say he was a home builder, he built, he, he had been taught in Eagle Pass, Texas um, by a master a craftsman how to build a two bedroom, one bath house. Oh my gosh. So he built hundreds of these in San Antonio, including the one I grew up in. Really? And my cousin Tommy and I, who were the same age, he, he died last year, unfortunately. We, we'd help our granddad in the, in the uh, summertime um, building the cabin, there were two cabinets in the kitchen, two in the bathroom over yeah. the washing machine. There were um, there were um, bags of cement to be hauled when he laid the footings for the houses, and lumber to be carried, and shingles to be hoisted up the roof. So, I, I, Tommy and I both became woodworkers. Oh, he that's used, so he awesome! He did some beautiful work himself. Yeah. And um, so that's that's that was the the genesis of it. Let's see. Let's close this. Yeah. It's also, Bill, it seems like such an incredible way to keep his memory alive. When, when someone can teach you a mm -hmm. skill or a trade and you can continue passing that on. Yeah. And, you know, Bill already alluded to this, but uh, listen up because now you have a chance to win one of these. Okay, so here are the details. Yeah. So these are, again, very rare. It will be a hand-signed box by KPRC Channel 2 anchor Bill Baeza himself. And if you'd like to enter, look for the contest section of our homepage, HoustonLife.tv. The rules are posted there as well. You can enter once per day, now through Thursday, and we will be announcing two winners on Friday, January 31st, which also coincides with, Bill, your very last day mm -hmm. here at Channel 2. Hard to believe we're even saying this. It's going to be sad for me uh, to leave here, but, yeah. you know, after almost 50 years, and I'm 72 years old, I, my energy level is just... I can't even believe that. Really, uh, compressed a lot so but it's just time right. it's time to give others a chance to to move into this wonderful slot well tonight. and quite honestly it's time for you to start a next chapter mm -hmm. enjoy life have fun with missy i don't know if there's going to be another chapter probably an epilogue <laughs> <laughs> you could have a long long chapter bill <laughs> well listen from all of us here at houston <laughs> life congratulations so on much. 49 years in broadcasting thanks so amazing. Much. love seeing you every day thank you and uh yeah good luck to y'all on winning the box these are yeah. the actual boxes you'll win here Oh, well, he'll, and Bill's going to repolish our job. And if they accidentally <laughs> go missing before the contest happens, <laughs> just don't be surprised. No, Bill, thank you so much. And we'll miss seeing you around, but I hope you'll come back to see us very often. Thank you so much. Great I, to I, see you. I really enjoyed being on.
Thanks Congratulations. For me. Okay. Tell Missy hi. Will do. We'll be right back.